Quinn Ewers started his college career at Ohio State and he came in as the number one recruit in his class. But since CJ Stroud was simply better, he transferred to Texas to get on the field. However, with only two games left in his freshman year, his future was very uncertain. Arch Manning, the number one QB in his class, comes from a background of amazing quarterbacks and he'll be enrolling as a Longhorn this upcoming year which might cause a huge battle for the starting spot. Today, I'm going to play through Quinn Ewers' college career and we'll see if he transfers, if he can win any championships, and if he'll end up making the NFL. Quinn Ewers' story begins at the end of this current year, and he was playing really well, but that doesn't mean he'd be the QB1 next season. Arch Manning could come in and steal his spot, however, he could also keep it. He got up to an 88 overall in the offseason and he was ready to take on the new Big 12 because he beat out Arch Manning in practice. Obviously, he would have to fight to stay QB1 and Central Arkansas wasn't going to cause any issues at all. Quinn Ewers started the season right, leading the Longhorns to a dominant win, but the next week at Alabama was rough. And it's not because he played badly, but he just didn't do enough to take down the Crimson Tide, even with dots like this. This one. On fourth and goal, Quinn Ewers couldn't get us into the end zone, so that's how we lost to Alabama. Fortunately, he bounced back the next week against Wyoming, so Arch Manning was still the backup quarterback. However, Kansas caused him some trouble, and this definitely wouldn't be the first time that Texas would struggle against the Jayhawks. But I wasn't expecting it to be 21-0 this early in the game. Quinn Ewers did his best to bounce back and try to lead a comeback, but it wouldn't be enough in the end, and all of a sudden, Texas was 2-2. Two two. So Quinn Ewers was on a very tight lead leash with us down 28 to 0 early and Arch Manning was ready to come in if there was another mistake. But then everything changed quickly. Quinn Ewers started making plays that nobody saw coming and midway through the third quarter he got us within one possession when he delivered this throw on the money to Xavier Worthy. With two minutes left the comeback was complete but our defense collapsed at the end and it felt like Quinn Ewers did it all for nothing. Somehow, he still had a starting job going into the biggest game of the year, the Red River Showdown. But that wouldn't last long as he was struggling to connect with his receivers. With two and a half minutes left, Quinn Ewers failed to convert on this fourth down play. So on the last drive of the game, he got pulled and Arch Manning got to come in with a chance to prove himself. With 30 seconds left, he threw the game-winning touchdown pass and Quinn Ewers wouldn't see the field again. After that decision, Texas didn't lose a game, which led to Quinn Ewers entering the transfer portal and transferring to his third college in his career. His first game was against his old school, and like you'd expect, he wanted to go out and prove that he was always the better quarterback. With two minutes left in the first quarter, he put Texas A&M up by 14, and he continued to dominate throughout the game. Even when he made some atrocious reads, he still somehow thread the needle through the defense, and Arch Manning clearly had nothing on him. Quinn Ewers won the Lone Star Showdown, but his schedule didn't get any easier. He had to play at number one Alabama, and it was clearly going to be a shootout in the rain. Quinn Ewers struggled with a few bad reads throughout the game, and he wasn't able to keep up with the Crimson Tide. But I'd say it was more of his defense's fault than his, because they simply couldn't stop Alabama, and this five-touchdown performance was wasted. So we needed to bounce back, and Quinn Ewers was ready to prove his abilities. With a minute left, he had his opportunity as Texas A&M was down by seven, and with nobody open, he made an incredible play proving that he could take over games. With all the momentum, he decided to go for the win on the two-point conversion, and that was the best decision yet. Quinn Ewers was establishing himself and turning his career around with the NFL being a real possibility. It would be exciting to see how these next two years went for him because stat lines like this were insane. After getting his name on the Heisman watch list, the option to declare early was a real possibility, but there was still a long season ahead, so we'd see what would end up happening. Obviously, things were going well for now, and they should continue continue that way against James Madison. Quinn Ewers loved the easier opponent, or so he thought. With just three minutes left in the fourth quarter, he found his team down by three points, and they were legitimately locking up our offense. After Quinn Ewers couldn't pick up this much-needed fourth and 17, his nightmares became a reality as he was part of the upset of the week. And even if the playoffs weren't attainable now, an SEC championship was still on the table. But it would take a perfect finish to the year with a little luck. So we took out all our frustration on the Tigers. The following week, we knew to take a Sunbelt school more seriously this time, and 
Quinn Ewers was delivering dots throughout the entire game. Obviously, this was not a very impressive win, but at least we were now 6-2. and two. And there were only four games left in the season. Quinn Ewers wanted to finish his junior year right, and he kept having good performances. The next week was a snow battle, and beating Louisville shouldn't really be a problem. However, even though Quinn Ewers was playing well, it ended up being a pretty close game near the end, and we would have another tough game at LSU. At this point, we needed Alabama to lose a game, and if they didn't, Quinn Ewers wouldn't make an SEC championship. But he didn't even care because he was breaking school records, taking away Johnny Manziel's achievements. However, not everything was good, as with less than a minute left, we were in trouble, but then Quinn Ewers pulled off one of the best plays I've ever seen on 4th and 24 with this throw. Unfortunately, that didn't end up translating to a game-winning touchdown, and even though playing at Missouri on the road was an easy win for us, Quinn Ewers wasn't happy with how his season went. He wasn't getting good feedback from NFL scouts, so he was going to have to return for his senior year. And after getting a Peach Bowl win, along with an amazing offseason, Quinn Ewers was ready for one last ride, and he was off to a good start against his old school. With two minutes left in the first half, Quinn Ewers delivered this 30-yard laser on the Longhorn defense, and he continued to find his favorite target in the back of the end zone. At the end of the game, we were very aggressive on fourth and three, and that conversion would secure the rivalry win. Quinn Ewers started the season the right way, and the next week against LSU, his dominance continued with his receivers holding onto the ball in the rain and fighting all the way into the end zone. Quinn Ewers wasn't struggling at all against the Tigers defense, and he was looking to top his 43 touchdown total from last year. Obviously, when we played Central Arkansas, there wasn't any struggling, and there were even sick one-handed grabs. Quinn Ewers had another great game, and he was on pace to win the Heisman. I wasn't sure if there was going to be a team that could stop him because he made scoring touchdowns look so easy. He put up another five on Arkansas, and Quinn Ewers didn't want to lose to James Madison this year, so he was very happy while watching his backup running back run circles around their defense. In the end, it turned into a blowout, and a 49-0 win was great revenge. The next week, we traveled to Alabama, and winning against the Crimson Tide wasn't the only thing on Quinn Ewer's mind. The day before, he had placed a few underdog pickums, which is a fun game mode where you choose if your favorite athletes will go higher or lower on a certain stat line. And if you live in one of these yellow states, you're eligible to play underdog pickum. If you want some free cash to play around with, underdog is doubling your first deposit up to $100 when you use code Bordeaux or the first link in my description. But now it's time to see how the Alabama game went, and since they were 2-2, two two, Quinn Ewers wasn't worried. This kick made Texas A&M 6-0, putting us on top of the SEC, and I didn't see any reason why we wouldn't stay there. With Quinn Ewers at the helm, the Aggies couldn't be stopped as he continued to score a ton of touchdowns. It seemed like this season was pretty much natty or bust with Quinn Ewers striving to reach all of his goals, and he was on pace to get drafted. With only four games left in the regular season, it seemed like going undefeated was a real possibility, and with another dominant win on the road at Ole Miss, Quinn Ewers was gaining Heisman height, and he was not slowing down at Cincinnati in a snowstorm. Once again, he led us to another win, and with only two games left in the regular season, Quinn Ewers was simply padding his stats. At this point, I wasn't sure how he wouldn't win the Heisman Trophy because stats like this are insane. We were now the number one team in the country, and we had so much momentum. So Quinn Ewers was very happy that he transferred here. It took three colleges, but he was finally able to find his home, and in all honesty, he saved Jimbo Fisher's career at the same time. Now we were going into the SEC Championship, and Quinn Ewers was ready to go out and beat number six Georgia as he continued to thread the needle for touchdown passes. With a minute left in the third quarter, he put us up by seven points, and from there, Quinn Ewers would win an SEC Championship, along with the best award, the Heisman Trophy. The college football playoffs were now set, and Notre Dame was our first opponent. Quinn Ewers was playing on another level, but it was a close game going into the fourth quarter, and with two minutes left, the game was in Quinn Ewers' hands. Fortunately, with 15 seconds left, he found his running back to give us the lead, which was enough to make the national championship against undefeated Ohio State. Quinn Ewers was going to make sure his college career ended the right way, and he was on fire throughout the entire game. To end the third quarter, he threw his fourth touchdown pass, and that was enough to win a national championship. Quinn Ewers had completely changed his career, and a few months later, he was drafted as the number one pick. He was going to have a bright future as a Colt. 